Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvelously well. As ever, please subscribe. Um, go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and you'll get a bunch of free stuff. Um, there's drum samples that I use on pretty much every record I've ever made. You can get those. You can get some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, that's recording in different studios. There's a detailed uh, drum miking package, etc. All kinds of fun stuff. There's other files you can download to mess with drums. If you go to our Beat Detective, um, um, if you go to our Beat Detective video, you'll see the files that we use are there are actually available for download, so you can edit them, edit them the same way I do, or whichever way you'd like to try. Tons of fun stuff to do. Anyway, so today. Um, I'm going to talk about my 1073, the BAE 1073. And the reason why I'm doing this, frankly, is um, when I first started in Los Angeles in the late 90s, early 2000s, the first people that made um, or remade, I should say, the 1073s were this company, BAE, as we see here. And the first real proper mic pre I ever owned was a 1073 and this is a new one of the same one um, and the reason why we're going to try this one out is because it has a couple of little features here it has this new feature here which is called the Bootsy mod and basically what it is it's a Jensen transformer um, if you, you you know I've recorded at Sunset Sound quite a lot and their consoles have API EQs and highly modded API mic pre's using Jensen transformers. So that sound itself, the Jensen, is is quite a fun thing. So what I can do is I can plug a guitar directly in here, and you know get the benefit. What we'll do is we'll put a bass in here and here. Okay, um, and then obviously all the standard you know um, 1073 EQ here, which of course is really musical and really great. And then the other thing they've added is this impedance switch here between 1200 ohms and 300 ohms. And what this impedance switch will do, in 1200 it will be pretty standard for a, a higher output, higher impedance uh, condenser, etc. But the 300 ohms is quite useful for low impedance output microphones such as ribbon mics, specifically and particularly I should say, old ribbon mics. If you had some old ribbon mics lying around, it could cope with that. Um, I think, you know, from what I've read, a 300 ohm on a, an old ribbon mic will probably give you about 60 dBs worth of extra gain. Um, people state somewhere between five and ten times more impedance than a microphone is perfect. And an old ribbon mic, uh, we're guessing, is around about 50 or 60 ohms. So 50 ohms gives us six times as much, 300 matching. So that's supposedly and, you know, I believe probably really good for ribbon mics. However, like anything, switch it. Listen, see what sounds best on any microphone. Um, but we're going to start with the 1200 here. Um, and uh, let's hear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my electric guitar, as ever. Cheap and cheerful, but a great sounding guitar. My, uh, my Yamaha Pacifica. As you know, I love it because there's Seymour Duncan pickups in it. I've always been a Seymour Duncan fan. The first real guitar I ever got, I put Seymour Duncan pickups on it when I was a kid. And it's a huge difference. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the headphones and have a listen. All right, that's absolutely no EQ whatsoever. Okay, so let's engage the EQ and have a listen. Um, EQ in. Now, what I like about this, so we've got a high pass filter here, it's really useful. Um, like any EQ, I don't want to get too carried away with doing too much, but I can show you what the possibilities are on an electric. Now, if we go as high as 160, see the difference there? Here's 160 hertz and above it's 50 80 160 here and up to 300 um, 300 I only probably use on like a mandolin or tambourines or something like that that I really don't need those low lows on those low mids on but here the 80 is nice the 160 is probably a little bit too much for an electric it depends, you know, if I've got a lot of fat synth holding down the bottom end, then maybe I'd want to come up to 160 and let that synth pump through. Um, and it, if you're ever unsure about EQ and you don't want to, you know, commit to something, then don't, you know, don't commit, let it do it in the mixing. But, 
you know, with a, a, a bit of acquired knowledge and doing this quite a lot, I know what I want. So I'll probably just go to like 80 here. <laughs> that's going to lock in some of the lows and it would glue together nicely with my bass guitar. Okay, so next, I've got 220 is one of my favorite frequencies um, for low lows, for low mids, sorry. The thing about 220 is it's like, if you listen to um, ACDC, some of those little lows are really tasty like that, um, especially the early recordings, um, the early Mutt Lang, Lang ones like uh, Highway to Hell and Back in Black. There's really some nice 220 on lots of different things you hear in Old Push. On the bottom of the snare, it's kind of nice, and a little bit of lows on the guitar, low mids on the guitar is tasty. So let's put that in. Take it out. little bit of low mid thickening there really nice for guitars um, okay so here in our in our mids high mid section we've got a lot of choice you know between 360 and 7.2k personally I'm not a big 2k fan on guitars um, so I wouldn't really go anywhere like 1.6 or through maybe even 3.2 but I would definitely hear 4.8 because 5k is nice on guitars so that's basically 5k it's just a little <laughs> brought up some of the hiss there from the amp and the buzz, but with this amount of gain on amp, it's really all that big of a deal. So that's pretty tasty. I'm trying to play the same riff over and over again so you can reference the differences. I love that. to me feels like it's brought out the articulation of the pick and everything it's great that's a great guitar sound now here you know but this is i can't remember what it's shelved at i should have asked mark but it's probably the 10 or 12k let's have a listen i mean that really opens up the top personally i don't really need to do that i could do a little bit more of that on mixing Another thing we can do, which is a nice trick I like to do, is this gain setting is not adding any extra distortion, but I like to play with it. So if I wind down my output a little bit and click up the gain here, let's just see what it does. It's adding a little bit more pre to it. You know, I, the, these... Preamps are classic. I mean, this is the sound of rock and roll through most of the 70s, um, especially, you know, in England. Um, so anything, any Zeppelin, Jeff Beck, and any of those classic guitar tones that we're trying to create, 90% of the time it was like an SM57, one of the, and one of these. So, you know, working the preamp a little harder is a nice thing. I mean, I'm gonna go crazy and put it up one more. <laughs> be honest that's adding in like a lot of compression it's nice Probably a little extra break up there from the pre itself, but you know, I like it. Okay, so let's go, let's try uh, just plugging a bass in and seeing what sort of uh, stuff we can do with the bass. Okay, so let's plug in our bass here. I've got my lovely Mexican made jazz bass. Let's plug in the DI. Cool, so let's turn on the DI switch. Let's get a bit more gain. Okay. 
Try the same trick, I'm going to bring the output down a little bit, put an extra click on this. Feels pretty cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's engage the EQ. We don't need any high pass filter here. I mean, 50 is a little bit too much for me. I'd rather do that on a mix. Um, but here we've got 35, 60, 110, 220. We did a little low boost on our guitars, low mid boost on our guitars uh, at 220. 35 isn't particularly anything I, I'm interested in hearing on a bass boosted. But let's see what 60. See, I've said it to 60s like. That's nice. Go crazy there, bring it back a bit. That's nice. It's nice. Really tasty. Right, and if we go to our low mids, it's not the tastiest sounding frequency, but you see this 360 here. I usually boost that on the low mids and then scoop it out of the drums because it kind of fills in the light, gives it some fullness. So let's go and select 360. It's adding some toughness. But I actually don't know if I like it at the moment. So let's try something else. 700 is going to give us a little bit of that piano -iness. I mean, that's nice. Without the EQ. With the EQ. Yeah, you know what? I feel like I'm going to keep the 60 there. Let's try some experiments and mids. Oh, that's nice. That's kind of, to be honest, that one six there isn't somewhere I'd normally go to. But it's, it's exaggerating what I like about the jazz bass sound. That's kind of inspiring tone. It's a little clacky. You hear some of that. So let's bring it down just a little bit. I'm actually going to boost the 60 tiny amount. I'm going to leave the high. We don't need to touch that. And without the EQ. I mean, it sounds good without the EQ too, because it's a 1073, it's just a great pre. And you could do this EQ on, you know, in, in Pro Tools or whatever your DAW is, but let's try it again. That's pretty tasty. All right, cool. Let's hear an acoustic guitar with this. Okay, cool. So, um, got my acoustic ready to go. Um, and as usual, it's my Yamaha LR LL16. I like and it's about 600 bucks and sounds amazing. It's a beautiful guitar. Anyway, so what I've done is I've got my Lewitt 550 here, which is kind of a mid price um, condenser that I really love and I use a lot. Um, it's set completely flat, it's got a linear setting, so that's set to linear, and it's also got uh, it's set to 0 dB. Acoustic guitar obviously is, doesn't have a huge amount of output, so I'm not going to distort it. I mean, maybe I could, but I doubt it. So, acoustic set like that, I've got it around the 12th to 14th fret as ever. I don't have it near the sound hole, so we don't get too boomy. This acoustic has got a lot of good lows in it, so we might engage the EQ to see what it can do. Okay, so let's engage Phantom. Thump. Let's go another click of gain. It's two clicks of gain. Oh, 
Might be good for arpeggios set like this. It's bringing out a lot of the articulation. Maybe a bit too much for uh, for strums. Let's bring it down one. There you go. That's good for strumming. So there's a little bit of boominess there, even though we're not facing the sound hole. So let's engage the EQ. That's an 80. Still a bit of boominess. I'm going to go up to 160, believe it or not. Might be too much for me. So let's go back to 80. So we're high passing everything above 80, everything below 80 is gone. Now, maybe we'll rebalance. So if I go to like 110 here, I can maybe. It's a little boomy. So let's just cut a tiny bit of 110 here. Okay, so let's see if we can add some air. So here's 7.2, a little bit. It's nice. It's nice on arpeggios. Okay, um, and then let's go our high high here. And just put a little bit more air on there. Very subtle, maybe a little bit more, just because. I really like that. And just for schnitz and schnickles, I want to see what it sounds like this. Ooh, that's like a little mid-range punch. Ooh, who knew that? That's great. It's like that little extra, what do they say, 6 dBs worth of gain. So, with the EQ in, and with this impedance switch to 300 ohms, that's a pretty awesome combination. The Lewitt, um, the 1073 with the EQ engaged on this 300 ohm impedance setting. Really like that. What I like is I've, I've had this guitar now for a few months and I haven't changed the strings. Shh, don't tell anybody. So these are still the same strings. But it's adding like a little glassiness that we love. Okay, take the EQ out. It's woolly. It's not a bad, uh, you know, sound because the 1073 mic pre is fantastic. And like anything, if you're a good musician or you're working with good musicians, they they, they can play to the tone. Like for this tone, I would probably, you know, be wanting to do, like, you know, some beautiful, you know, without the EQ in, almost a jazz tone. But it's a little uneven. I'm getting a lot of squeakiness and I'm getting a lot of boom. Like boom there. I bring the EQ in. 
with my 80 high pass, my 110 slight cut, my 7.2 boost, and my 10 slash 12k, we've got to look it up to find out, boost, set to 300, which is giving us this mid-range kind of ah. <laughs> I'm using this all the time like this on acoustic. This is great. It's great for everything. Whether it be, you know, arpeggios, chords. Combination, jazzy stuff. Particularly, I think it's going to be good. Oh, yeah. Picking. Finger picking. Take it out. A little boxy, but still great. EQ back in. Fantastic. All right, great. Well, thanks ever so much for watching. Put the uh, 1070 through for its paces, you get to see what the EQ does. The Bootsy mod with this Jensen transformer in it is really cool. I think that's adding some thickness and weight. There's something about Jensen transformers. Like I said, the Sunset Sound consoles, which are some of the most famous consoles in the world, the ones they design themselves, use Jensen transformers. So I think it's a really nice mod, very smart. And then this impedance switch, which I really haven't got to play with before, you can see what it did with acoustic. It's really nice. Um, again, you know, it was designed, you know, primarily for uh, ribbon mics um, to match the impedance for ribbon mics. But look what it did with our condenser. It just kind of gave us more gain and really boosted that mid-range and just evened out the tone really beautifully. So, you know, there it is. It's a great mic pre. Um, I've been using one of these for years without the mod. Um, so I can speak very highly of it. And, you know, it's, it's pretty much the sound of rock and roll. Um, they're bringing out the little mini ones um, without EQs on it. That's going to be a huge, a huge seller, I can tell. Um, and, um, you know, great work. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please uh, ask me any questions. I love comments and questions. I like to engage with you. We're all in this together. We'll, I'm always learning. I'm going to try out some really inexpensive mic pre's and some really expensive and everything in between. Um, so this is not just about, you know, 1073s as much as I love them. There are other options out there. You know, the 312s uh, are, are coming at about 600-ish kind of dollars, and those are great, you know, mic pre's as well. So we're going to review everything over the time, and I just want to let you know, you know, some of the secrets I have for EQing, and you know, you can see my process. It's really a kind of a process of exp exploration. So anybody that tells you the right way to do something doesn't know what they're talking about, because you can tell I I just found out a couple of little things there that I didn't even know you could do. So Please leave me some comments, leave me some questions, and let's sort of engage. And of course, as ever, subscribe and go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list. And thank you ever so much for watching.